This video was made possible by Audible. For Amazon Prime members, get three months for the cost of one by signing up at audible.com slash HAI. The United States, as one of the world leaders in social welfare innovation, has made great strides in eliminating homelessness by offering free unlimited food and housing to millions of people. All you have to do is say this extra special cheat code, and then you're in. Now, the accommodation in these prisons might be less than stellar, but it's not polite to complain when indulging in the hospitality of others. The other thing the US is good at is being thick. This place is far from that place, and that place is far from this place. That's how distance works. What that means is that if someone does the murder there and then hops over to here and then gets arrested, they have to get back to there to get tried. Other large countries, such as Russia and China, eliminate this inefficiency by just getting rid of that burdensome trial phase altogether, but the US has another solution. Now, as much as a cross-country criminal road trip sounds like a great movie premise, what makes for an even better movie premise is an airline specifically and solely dedicated to transporting prisoners. Wait, I think I might have something here. We could have it where the prisoners start a riot and take over the plane and force it to land and yeah, this is good, this is good, let me call my agent, oh wait. Damn it, Nicolas Cage. Yeah, so unfortunately, for many reasons, this movie exists, and so does the premise behind it. It's called the Justice Prisoner and Alien Transportation System, or JPATS. The core of this transportation system, which moves over 700 prisoners per day, is a few 737-400s. These aircraft supposedly fly on a regular schedule. I mean, their website literally says so. Although, the investigative reporting division of Half as Interesting spent literally minutes poring through the flight logs and could only sort of find a regular schedule. Like, for example, they have this rotation where they fly from Oklahoma City to St. Louis to Terre Haute to Detroit and back to Oklahoma City, leaving at roughly 8 to 9.30 a.m., which they often fly on the first and third Monday of the month, but then sometimes they just don't. Or sometimes they'll fly this an extra random time per month, or sometimes they'll just skip a city or rearrange the order, or whatever. It's like they have a schedule and then put a very minimal government employee level of effort into following it. But anyways, a passenger's journey on America's second worst airline goes a little like this. Let's say our prisoner, jailed for revealing the government's printer codes, is housed in the Federal Correctional Institution in Oakdale, Louisiana, and needs to testify at a trial in Chicago. Usually, inmates are told nothing in advance about their transfer in order to deter chances of escape. Step one is likely getting woken up at an ungodly hour of the morning to get searched and then plopped on a bus. At this point, an inmate would know they're getting transferred, but they would have no idea where they'll end up at the end of the day. It's sort of like connecting through Newark Airport. Said bus would then drive 70 miles or 110 kilometers southwest to Lake Charles Regional Airport, where the inmates would be thoroughly searched and then loaded onto one of the JPATS planes. Now, these planes are pretty much normal passenger planes, aside from being an absolutely ancient 26 years old. On board, the inmates are handcuffed, fitted with chains around their ankles, and are accompanied by some of the grumpiest flight attendants in the industry, US Marshals. These Marshals apparently carry guns loaded with hollow point bullets. These reduce the chance of a bullet piercing the aircraft hull if fired. JPATS carefully schedules the inmates to reduce the chance of an airborne prison riot. If two members of rival gangs need transport, for example, they'll almost certainly be assigned different flights. Now, back to our itinerary. From Lake Charles, the aircraft typically flies to Midland, Texas to drop off and pick up more inmates before flying back to its base in Oklahoma City. Upon landing, the aircraft does not taxi to the passenger terminal, but rather it bypasses that and arrives here. This special little solitary jet bridge connects to the aircraft and then our passenger would walk down this long hallway into the Federal Transfer Center, which bears an uncanny resemblance to the undoubtedly even less pleasant Charles de Gaulle Airport Terminal 1. The Federal Transfer Center is essentially the prisoner's layover hotel at Oklahoma City Airport. They wait here for an undetermined number of days until the next flight to their final destination. In the recent schedule, the wait between the flight from Lake Charles for the next flight to Chicago has been about 11 days. Once the day of their next flight arrives, the prisoner would walk back down that long hallway, board the plane, and fly to their next accommodation to wait their appointment at trial. This is what happens every weekday as these white, nondescript 737s shuffle prisoners across America's skies. Now, if you're trying to decide whether to fly this airline, you should hear the review by one of its former passengers, Piper Kierman. 
She is the author of Orange is the New Black, the book that the show is based on, which itself is based on her own experiences in prison, and it includes a section on when she was transferred using JPATS. I know most people can't find time to sit down and read books, so rather, you can listen to this book when you're driving, doing dishes, at work, going for a run, or whenever, through Audible. Audible has the largest selection of audiobooks on the planet in addition to a huge amount of Audible originals. Exclusively in the month of July, Audible is offering Amazon Prime members their first three months of membership for 66% off by going to audible.com slash H-A-I. With that, you can listen to Orange is the New Black or pretty much any audiobook you want, once again, at audible.com slash H-A-I.